In this video, we're going to be discussing the Valsalva test. The Valsalva test involves the use of the Valsalva maneuver, which you're probably familiar with. And the Valsalva maneuver can be used in the assessment of many conditions all over the body, but we're going to be looking at it in the context of cervical spine pathology, more specifically cervical radiculopathies. To perform the Valsalva test, the patient's going to be in the seated position as you see over here. Theoretically, they could be standing, but because they're going to be doing the Valsalva maneuver, which increases the risk of lightheadedness, they could pass out, and the outcome's worse there if they're in the standing position. So to minimize risk, we have the patient seated for this. The patient is instructed to take a deep breath in and hold it while they forcefully exhale against a closed glottis. So what does that mean? Well, obviously, when you typically exhale, you're breathing air either out through your mouth or out through your nose. So when you exhale against a closed glottis, you're activating all the muscles necessary to exhale, except you're not allowing any air to leave. No air comes out of your nose, no air comes out of your mouth. And so what that does is that increases pressure within the different cavities of the body, in particular the thoracic cavity and the cervical spine. This forceful exhalation against a closed glottis is termed the Valsalva maneuver. And in the Valsalva test, the patient's going to do that Valsalva maneuver for 10 to 15 seconds straight. Okay, so let's take a look at that right here. So big inhale and then exhalation against a closed glottis. And I'm forcefully exhaling here in this 10 to 15 second window. You might be able to tell here that my face is getting tomato red from building up that pressure. Okay. Now, why do we do that? Well, remember I said that this maneuver increases thoracic pressure. It also increases cervical pressure, although we don't normally think about that. And that increase in cervical pressure has the potential to compress nerve roots. Remember, cervical radiculopathies involve compression of the cervical nerve roots, those going out to the brachial plexus. And a positive Valsalva test is going to be reproduction of familiar radicular symptoms in the upper extremities or the lower extremities. Now, obviously, a cervical radiculopathy does not involve the symptoms in the lower extremities. So if this does reproduce symptoms in the lower extremities, we need to take a closer look at the lumbar spine. However, if there's any familiar radicular symptoms going into the upper extremities, that strongly rules up a cervical radiculopathy. In fact, if we look at the psychometrics down here, the sensitivity isn't great, it's only 22%. However, the specificity is excellent, 94%. In other words, if somebody performs this Valsalva maneuver, holding for 10 to 15 seconds, and it does reproduce, familiar upper extremity radicular symptoms, there is a 94% chance that the person does have a cervical radiculopathy. That's an excellent specificity, and it's about the highest, even higher than some of the special tests within the clinical prediction rule for the cervical radiculopathy. So why don't we just use this test all the time? Well, obviously, if you're performing the Valsalva maneuver, you're not going to want to do this if the patient has any cardiovascular risk factors. So pretty much you would reserve the use of this test for a very young, healthy patient that just happened to get an injury that caused radicular symptoms. You don't want to use this if the patient has any known cardiovascular or pulmonary risk factors. Okay, Let's take one more look at this test. So we're going to do a deep inhalation and hold it while exhaling against a closed glottis for 10 to 15 seconds. Deep breath in, and then that Valsalva maneuver. 10 to 15 seconds. And a positive test is going to be reproduction of familiar radicular symptoms, and if they're in the upper extremities, it indicates a cervical radiculopathy. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 